This is part two to the six part series of my solar build. And today we're gonna to be talking about all the components electrically that we're gonna to need to build this solar system out. And if you've been following along with my channel, you know that I have an in-phase solar system currently, but I am switching over to Hoy Miles and there's several reasons that I'm doing that. And I'm gonna talk about those throughout this video, but I do wanna talk about each component that we have here. This is a video that you're not gonna be able to find anywhere else because no one else has this in front of them. And if you follow along with my Enphase build that I did about two years ago, you know that I was super impressed with Enphase because of the ecosystem that they offered. There was no one else on the market that offered that type of ecosystem where all the components would just work with the microinverter itself. But now times are different and Hoy Miles has entered the market providing you with not only microinverters, but they have string inverters, they have the battery backup, they have a combiner box now, they have the DTU, which is your direct link to your microinverters that uh, sends the signal and records the data from them. You have the cords, you have the connectors, you have the tool to disconnect, you have everything that you need from one manufacturer. And for me, that is super important. And did I forget to mention that they offer quad microinverters, dual microinverters, and single microinverters. And that offers you such flexibility. So no matter what type of solar system that you're building, whether it's with microinverters or string inverters, Hoy Miles got a product for you. Now let me introduce you to what I'm gonna be using on my solar system. I'm gonna be using the dual microinverters and I'm gonna have 15 of these because I have 30 panels on this system. And this is the HMS 1000. I and mean, what that means is this can output up to a thousand watts of power, 500 from here, 500 from here. So we have a 500 watt panel that could go into here of input and 500 here, and it can output of, of 1000 watts. That is a major reason that I am switching from in phase to Hoy miles because on the in phase system, now I have IQ seven pluses, and that is a maximum of 295 watts that that microverter can put out. You can buy all the way up to 386 watts of output, but if we're using the 440 watt bifacial panels that I plan on using, then I'm gonna have be limited to 386 watts of continuous power. There is an argument about startup and at shut off, but I'm gonna have to verify that through my system. I do believe that this will be a much better solution on a larger panel. You may agree with me, you may not agree with me. So on a 440 watt panel, this I think is a perfect pairing because on the 440 watts, we can have a bifacial gain that can get us up to 520 watts. And yes, I do, and I have recorded this, that 440 watt panel has an output of 440 watts. It is actually outputting exactly what the panel says without even the bifacial gain, without having it really up in the air with a reflective background on it. So that panel is a very high quality panel and I've never seen that before. So it's very impressive. And I did not wanna be losing any of that power with a microinverter that couldn't do that. So I chose to go with Hoy Miles for that main reason I'm just tired of losing power or getting that clipping from those in-phase microinverters. So next we'll move on to the wiring. So we have this wiring that we'll be using. This get come from Hoy Miles as well. And to connect your microinverter into this, you basically would just connect this connector into the end of this. And then this into your microinverter and you're connecting and you move on. Their disconnect tool, which is really simple to use. You put it in there, it's actually got a place right here that you just press down and pull out. And the same thing for this, this tool works on every item that you get. If you need to extend the cable, they make an extender. So you just install this on this side of the cable and you can do it with one hand. And then you would add this cable over here, like that right there. Now your cable is extended. They have thought a lot of stuff out because there is no way of installing this in the wrong direction. If you see that flat side and that curved side, you can't put it in that cable in the wrong direction. And I do want to demonstrate this one more time using the disconnect tool. So all you do is press it in and it automatically disconnects it and you just pull it apart. And it's really that easy. So you just press it in. You don't have to have a hand on this side either. So press it in. You heard it. And now you just pull it apart. 
And that may seem insignificant, but think about this. When you're hanging off of a roof on a 10, 12 pitch, or you're on a ladder and you're 15 foot off the ground under an in-ground mount, wouldn't you want that to be an easy connection? And I'm not saying that Enphase is not an easy connection. It's the disconnect. I had problems with disconnecting the cable. So if you put something on there and you got to make a change when you're up on the ladder or you're up on the roof, it's annoying to use the little tool that they have. The trunk cable is another reason that I have chosen to switch from Enphase to Hoy Miles because the simplicity of this cable and there is no uh, hooking this up incorrectly, you know, putting the black on the red or the red on the black, you always will connect it from the microinverter all the way to your combiner box with the same wire that's coming out of the microinverter will be connected into your combiner box. It cannot go in right there. You got to flip it over to go in. So I love that about the cable. Another thing that I got a lot of questions about on my uh, in phase build was I used 12 gauge wire from the array over to the combiner box and I was getting the question why I didn't use 10 gauge wire. Well, 12 gauge wire that came with my system or with my microinverters made me think, why would I need to use 10 gauge wire when I'm using 12 gauge wire at the array? In this scenario, I got a 10 gauge wire or a trunk cable that I'm gonna be sending to a 10 gauge wire to run over to this combiner box. And one last thing about their trunk cables, these come in four different lengths. They come in one meter, 2.3 meter, three meter, and 4.6 meter. So depending on your build or your design, you'll wanna make sure you pick up the right trunk cables. Now, if you are in a situation where you need a custom uh, length, you could get a terminal cable that would allow you to create custom lengths. So you would just take it apart, pull out the internals. This is part of it right here. So you would connect your wires. And then when you go to put this back in, you'll see that it has snaps right there and snaps here. It can only go in one way because we have a groove right there and we have and out right there. So you push that in and then you would snap it in. I don't want to do that right now because I won't be able to get it back out easily. And then you would put this seal to the flat part there. That's creating watertight seal there. And then you would tighten this down around the wire and it would tighten up and create a watertight seal. And as you can see, I got several different lengths in the trunk cables. This really just depends on the overall design of your system. And if you do need a cap, I would just purchase a couple of these in case you have open ends like this. You could just put that on there to create a watertight seal. Next, I have a DTU, and this is what communicates with the microinverters to allow me to be able to monitor the system, to uh, determine how much output that we're getting from each panel and for the uh, total array, we do need a DTU. And this DTU is the model DTU Pro S. So this is compatible with these microinverters. And I know everyone's eyeballing this, the combiner box. This is the first that we've seen outside of in phase for someone to offer the combiner box with their microinverter system. And this, in my opinion, is a game changer. Let me get this cleaned up and let's take a little bit closer look of the actual combiner box. And with the addition of this combiner box from Hoy Miles, it does give me a lot of confidence I'm gonna be able to easily transition from my in phase system to the new Hoy Miles system. What I like most about this is that I have five slots of expandability so I can add five branches into this combiner box. It also has a wiring diagram over here so it will make it easy to get this connected. And I just noticed that this combiner box does have its own data transfer unit, its own DTU, and it is 4G capable. So that is really good news. You don't even need the DTU like that. It's already built in. And at the time of recording this video, I'm one of the only people that has this combiner box in their possession. So that's kind of my sneak peek and you'll have to stick around for future videos to learn more about this combiner box. And because there's very few people talking about the Hoy Miles system, I did want to put together a video to show you exactly what you would need if you were building a solar system with microinverters. And don't forget that this is a six part series to building out my solar system. I did want to make a dedicated video on the Hoy Miles equipment that I'll be using on this solar system because there's not a lot of people talking about it. And also I'll be installing all this equipment and showing you exactly how to do that in future videos. But in my next video, I'm going to be talking about the solar panels that I'll be using, the mounting system that I'll be using, and we'll start talking about how to create your own permit so you can build your own solar system. And my goal is to 
help as many people as possible build their own solar system. So if you're into that type of content, you may want to consider subscribing to the channel and turning on the notification bell so when I put out new videos like this, you get notified. I hope to catch you in my next video.